And we won the series for the first time in two, uh, 19 years. And that is when we decided to let our hair down and have a little bit of a drink. And we left the changing rooms at about half past 10. We went into London, some of us still in our whites. We got back to the hotel about quarter past. The ECB in their wisdom thought it would be a brilliant idea to put on an open tour bus ride around London that day. So we had to go upstairs, get a shower, get changed, get down to breakfast. The hotel in their wisdom thought it would be a brilliant idea to put on a champagne breakfast. <laughs> down into a champagne breakfast, we top up on our alcohol levels. We get taken out onto the bus. We got, first stop was Mansion House. And on the way there, the streets are absolutely chock a block. They're eight and nine deep. There's people hanging out of doors and windows. Our first stop, Mansion House, to meet the Lord Mayor. And to greet us was the High Sheriff. Now, the High Sheriff had come dressed up. Black shoes, silver buckles, long socks, daggers, silly little trousers, roughly shirt, gold chain, red jacket, hat, feather sticking out. He looked the dog's dangles. <laughs> We've all come off the bus, said, pleased to meet you, pleased to meet you. Andrew Flintoff trips off the bus, <laughs> knocks him flat on his backside, lifts him up, looks him up and down and says, <laughs> what the freak have you come as? So we get ushered inside Mansion House. There's white wine, wed wine, bitter lager. Don't mind if we do. We carry on drinking. They put us back on the bus. They take us to 10 Downing Street. <laughs> we get taken straight through 10 Downing Street into the garden. There's white wine, there's red wine, there's bitter, there's lager. Don't mind if we do. We top up a little bit more. Um, we hadn't been shown the, the restrooms on the way through the, 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 the house. So one of our fraternities decided that there was a lovely bank of rhododendrons on the left-hand side that they used to, to water the plants. I won't tell you who it was, but he didn't play in every single test match. Um, and it was then we, we decided we, we were allowed to leave. So we were leaving the Prime Minister's house, 10 Downing Street, and that is when I came into my own. I was walking just behind Kevin Peterson, just in front of Michael Vaughan and the then Prime Minister, Mr Tony Blair. We get to the famous black door with the number 10 on it. We get to the doorstep. Across the road is a group of photographers all flashing away. And we get to the edge. Tony Blair stands in the doorway going, hmm, I wonder what those want. So being a Yorkshireman, I told him. I said, they want a photo, <laughs> you knob. Now, oh, everybody was thinking it, but it took a Yorkshireman to tell the Prime Minister that he was a knob. <laughs> we get ushered onto the, the buses and we, and we leave fairly quickly after that. And it was on the way to the hotel that Andrew Flintoff made a, a schoolboy error and fell asleep. And Steve Armisen says, right, he's having it. He's been at me all series. Went to the front of the bus, picked up black permanent marker, went up to the sleeping Andrew Flintoff and put C-U-N-T on his forehead. Put T-W-A-T on his cheek, gave him a moustache, gave him a beard, gave him glasses. He went the whole hog on Andrew Flintoff's face. There was actual video footage of Freddie getting off the, the bus at the um, hotel. His jacket is firmly over his head. Everybody thought he was too pissed and bored of the limelight. I know his face was full of expletives. <laughs> he was on breakfast TV the following morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. His face is red raw. <laughs> he explained it away, saying that um, he'd had a cold shower to wake himself up in the morning. I know it was Neil Fairbrother and a gallon of turps scrubbing the permanent marker off his face. 